I decided to leave. I made a goof. I, I accidentally almost made this a fast tips video instead of a tech help video. <laughs> I realized it as I was doing the intro. And, and when I when I went to rewatch it after I was done, uh, it made me laugh. So I'm going to leave it in for you guys, and hopefully it brings a chuckle to your day. <laughs> Here we go. Welcome to another... Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make date buttons. Little buttons you can put next to a date field so you can click on them and go forward a day or back a day or forward a week or back a week or set it to today or tomorrow or to whatever else you want. Today's question comes from Carly in Chandler, Arizona, one of my platinum members. Carly says, I spend a lot of time changing dates for appointments. I usually have to push them back a day or two or move them back a week or two. Typing the date in or even using the little calendar pop-up thingy is a pain. I love that calendar pop-up thingy. <laughs> is there any way I can just make a button that says move this appointment back one week? Yep, not a problem, Carly. I'm going to show you how to do it. But first, this is a developer level tech help, which means you're going to need a little tiny bit of VBA. We literally need like two lines of VBA at the most. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started with VBA. It's not hard. Don't be scared. Also, while you're at it, I need you to know what is null is. If you don't know what null values are, go watch this video. And we're going to do a little if-then clause, so go watch that. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you'd like to. You'll find links for all this stuff down below in the description under the video. Now, what Carly is saying is she's got a date value. Let's say like this one here. And if the customer wants to push us back two or three days or a week or so, you know, you got to come in here. You got to, you know, either type the date in or you got to click this thing and count like one, two, three weeks back, whatever. It's just, I, I get it. I These are... This is handy, but it's not the best thing. So wouldn't it be nice if we could make a little button here that just goes, push it back a week. You want to push it back three weeks? Click on it three times. So let's make little buttons down here to go forward a day, back a day, forward a week, and back a week. And we'll also make little buttons to set it to today's date or tomorrow's date. Like if you got a, an appointment that you missed, it was two weeks ago, you can just click tomorrow and it'll make it tomorrow's date. Okay? Okay. All right, so let's add an appointment date to our table. Let's go to customer T, design view. You could recycle this date if you don't care about it anymore, but there's a lot that goes into that. So let's just make a new one. APPT date. That's our appointment date. It's going to be a date time value. I'm not going to put a default value in it because normally when you add a customer or a patient or whatever it is, you don't normally set up an appointment date right off the bat. Unless you do, that's up to you. But I'm going to assume that they don't have a default appointment date. I'm going to save that. So that means new values will be null, right? Well, let's go into the customer form. Now, just to save some space and to save some time, I'm going to just simply delete these guys here, right? Let's get rid of those. Form design, add existing field. Let's grab that appointment date, slide it right there, all right? I'm going to format paint from, let's say, this guy to get my colors and stuff. Okay, there we go. There's my appointment date field. Make it look all purty. Okay, appointment space date. There we go. Let's make sure it works. Save it, close it, open it back up. There's my appointment date field. Okay, put a date in there. All right, looks good. And yes, I'm using the ISO date standard, year, month, day. Since I've got students all around the world with all kinds of different date formats, this makes sure that everyone's on the same page. So I use this. Now, another thing that's nice, especially when you're dealing with appointment dates, is I like to see the day of the week on here. So I'm going to open up the properties for this guy. And now normally the default date format is short date, which for me looks like that because I've got my Windows system date set to that. But I want to see the day of the week there. So I'm going to type in DDD space YYYY dash DD or excuse me, MM dash DD. That's going to give me the three character day of the week, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, followed by the year, month, day. That's a custom format. Want to learn more about those date formats? Check out my format property and function video. All right, so now if I save this and close it down, let's take a peek at what I got now. There we go, that looks nice. 
it's easier for setting up appointments if you can see the day of the week there, right? And maybe let's uh, let's right align this guy too. There we go. Okay, now right down here, let's put a button I can click on to set this guy to today's date. So let's go to form design. Let's grab a button, drop it right there. Cancel the wizard. Going to make our own. And for the caption, we're going to put in here the word today. And let's change the font size, make it a little bit smaller. Let's go nine point. And we'll do one of those. So it's nice and tiny right there. Okay. Let's set the button's name. Double click on it. We'll call this guy the today button BTN. I like to end all my buttons in BTN. All right, let's put some code in it. Right click. And then come up to build event or down to build event, whichever way your window's facing. <laughs> That'll open up this code builder. And here we are at the today button click. This will happen when we click on that button. What we want to do, we're going to say appointment date equals today's date. That's it. Just to be safe for the date function, I like to put open close parentheses after it, even though access gets rid of them. I just, I'm in the habit of doing that because sometimes, like if you do it at a, like a default value in a table, it'll change that to, to date looking like this which isn't what you want. That's the word date. So we want the date function. So just out of habit, I like to do that at the end of it, even if access gets rid of it. So what does that say? It says, when I click on this button, set the appointment date field equal to today's date. That's it. All right, save it. And back off now. Close that. Let's close this. I like to close my forms between runs here. And then we'll click the button. Today is uh, November 27th. So I'm going to hit it. Boom. There we go. Sunday the 27th. Yes, I'm working on a Sunday. Took a few days off for Thanksgiving, so I gotta get some more work done. All right, how about another button for tomorrow? Let's go to design view. Let's copy this guy. Control C, Control V, right? Copy, paste. And I'm gonna put in here tomorrow. T-M-R-W is the caption. Don't forget to give it a name, not Command 33, right? Tomorrow button, T-M-R-W button. That's fine. If you don't, Alex will yell at you. Okay, right click, build event. And guess what? Appointment date equals date plus one, right? With date values, one is a day, right? A week is seven days and so on. So let's come back out here, save it, close it, open it, click the button, boom, there's tomorrow. Nice and easy. If you want to do yesterday, same thing, put a yesterday button over here, make it date minus one. That's how dates work. Want to learn more about this? Check out my date math video. Right, hours, minutes, and stuff work as fractions of a day. So it's pretty cool stuff. Okay, now how do we handle going plus a day or minus a day? Well, instead of looking at today's date, we just look at the date that's already in there. Let me add one to that. So, design view. Again, we'll copy one of these guys, copy, paste. Let's make this, let's start with plus D. And we'll name this guy date up button. Whoops, date up button, just like that. All right, right click, build event. This is now going to be appointment date equals appointment date plus one. So whatever's in that box already, add one to it. That'll add a day to it. Save it. Go back out here. Maybe shrink this guy up a little bit. Doesn't need like that. There you go. Still see it, right? Plus a day. We'll put minus a day next to it over there. Save it. Close it. Open it up. And plus Plus, 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 plus. See how easy it is to move forward today now? Want to move forward three days? Click, click, click. There's three days. Isn't that nice and simple? It's a lot easier, I think, than clicking here and going to this and then figuring out where you are. And then I just, you know what I'm saying? It's, I, I don't know. I think this is easier. Plus, plus, plus. Right. Today, plus, plus, plus. For me, at least. I don't know. Now, this works great unless you go to someone like this that doesn't have an appointment date and you hit plus date. Nothing happens, right? Because that's null. And what happens when you add anything to null? The result is null. So we got to look and see if that value is null first. And if it is, maybe default it to today's date. So let's go back to our code window. Now, there's two ways you could do this. I'm going to show you the easy way first that's easier for beginners to remember. Then I'll show you a slightly more complex way that's just cool and it's, it's more compact, okay? All right, so the easy way to do this is to say, if is null appointment date, then appointment date equals today's date. 
and then we'll add one to it. See, that's the easy way. Save it, come back out here, click the button, boom, and there you go. There's tomorrow's date. Okay, now, this utilizes is null and an if-then statement, but you could get rid of all that if you know how to use nz. Got a whole video on it. NZ stands for null to zero, and the zero can be whatever you want it to be. In other words, if a value is null, then set it equal to zero or something else, usually zero, because usually you're looking up IDs, but that zero value can be whatever you want it to be. It's like a pretty little compact if-then statement that is little one little nice little function. All right, here's how it uses. Here's, the, here's how it uses. Here's how it works. <laughs> All right, so instead of this big long thing, get rid of that. Okay, we can say NZ, the appointment date. And if that guy is null, what value do we want to put here? We'll put today's date. That's it. Someone's beaming in. Hold on, there it is. All right, so it'll look at appointment date first. If it's null, it'll set it equal to today's date and then add one to it. And that's it. Nice little compact statement right there. Save it. Give it a good compile once in a while, debug, compile. Every now and then, just check for errors. And then we'll come out here. We'll close this. We'll open it up. Let's go to someone who doesn't have an appointment date, and I'll hit the plus D button. Boop, there you go. Nice and simple. See that? This stuff ain't hard. All right, let's make a couple more buttons. Let's go minus a date, and then we'll go plus and minus a week. So design view. All right, let's copy this guy. Copy, paste. Slide it right there. We'll make this one minus a D. All right, we'll change, what's this guy's name is? Date up button, we'll make this one date down button. Date down button. Right click, build event, and then we'll just copy this code right from here. Copy, paste, and what are we gonna do? Minus one. Then we're gonna come out here, we're gonna copy both of these guys, copy, paste. Drag them over here. This will be minus a W and plus a W. This will be week down button and week up button. Week up button. We're gonna right click, build event. Where's our code? It's up here. Copy that, paste it in there. Now to go down a week, we have to go minus seven days. And to go plus a week, right click, build event, we have to go plus seven days. It's that simple. Save it. We can close this, close that, close this, save changes if it asks you. Customer form, plus a week, yep, 7th, 14th, 21st, 28th, minus a week. Tomorrow, today, minus a day. Plus a day. Look at that. And, you know, whatever ones you want down here, you want to add, you know, two weeks or whatever at a shot. If, if you're always adding increments of four weeks, make yourself a four-week button. Add 28 days. Now, what if you want to add months, like whole months, like go from November 28th to December 28th? If you're doing regular service visits and always the same day of the month or the same day of the year, you want to add two years or whatever. What if you want to use this with multiple date fields on different forms. Well, we will cover all of that and more in the extended cut for the members. We're gonna make a function, a global function, so that we can pass any control on any form to it and say, take this appointment date field and set it to tomorrow or add a day to it or add a month to it or add a week to it or add a year to it. We'll use a function as an event property so we don't have to have separate bits of code for each button that we create, we'll set up an interval combo box, this guy here, where you could pick any interval you want, which will be compatible with the date add function. So we can add a year, add a quarter, add a month, add an hour, add a second if you want to. It'll all be covered in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's lots of them, 300 plus by now. So come on and join, it's not expensive. And gold members can download these databases that I build in these classes and have access to the code vault where all these functions are located. But that is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.